Hello and welcome back to the board. I'm the Gap Major, and this is a review of the Pan Asia Tier 5 Premium Cruiser, the Huanghe, uh, which means Yellow River. Now, this is a tier. Five and six game of Domination Ring on the M2 of Nuremberg in division with a Bayern, an Exeter in division with a KG5, along with Dallas, a Bayern, California, a North Carolina, and a Rugia. So it is a carrier game. Uh, spawn on the right flank, and we'll see what we can do. But this map is certainly a very small map for a tier five and six game. So uh, Huang He um, is a represented in game as a Royal Navy ship following a Soviet refit in the service of the Communist Chinese Navy. And it's a very big what if, um, is the best way to put it. So, uh, Huang He uh, was originally um, HMS Aurora, an Arafusa class light cruiser built for the Royal Navy and launched in 1936. Following World War II, she was sold to the Republic of China, um, which nowadays is known as like Taiwan. Um, uh, where she then defected to uh, Communist China. Um, uh, upon defecting to Communist China, she was then sunk by the Republic of China during an airstrike. Um, so she's already been uh, sunk once now. Uh, in order to um, reflight her, the uh, Communist Chinese uh, required the assistance of the Soviet Union, I guess you could say. And uh, upon refloating the ship, um, they then. Uh, had to pay the Russians, and so they paid the Russians by completely stripping this ship of everything that was worthwhile. Um, and she had her engines stripped, all her armaments stripped, and she became a barracks ship on the uh, Yellow River, which is where she then got her name. Uh, Rangi was probably the fourth name she was given, and uh, she had like four names during uh, Communist Chinese service. Um, on top of the two names that she had, one obviously in Royal Navy service and one in the Republic of China service. Anyway, she was a back ship, but she's representing the game as after a supposed what if kind of refit, which was supposedly going to happen in the early 50s. Hence, why she's got these slightly different turrets if you say compare them to the Leander, Leanders in game, and also she's got that secondary radar armament as well on the uh, back there. Now, uh, Huang He obviously never was fitted out like this, and in fact, she was scrapped in a rather sorry state uh, sometime between 1966 and 1979. So, on to how she performs in game. What's this flank doing? Okay, seems, seems alright. So, um, survivability. Uh, she has the lowest HP for a tier 5 cruiser. As always, I should always caveat this and say I'm doing a comparison uh, to the tech tree cruisers at tier 5. So I'm ignoring the premiums. Now, obviously lowest HP of 24,100. She also has the joint second lowest torpedo reduction of 7%. However, uh, not many cruisers actually do have torpedo reduction, so she does have a, a nice little advantage there, I guess you could say. Now, uh, when it comes to the armor scheme, it's always best to go back to the board and take a look at the armor viewer there. So, back in the board, take a look at the armor scheme of the Huanghi. Um, so, let's start off, let's do the superstructure. That's always nice and simple. 13 millimeters of plating pretty much everywhere. This is going to resist pretty much absolutely nothing. Um, and it's, I wouldn't say it's large, but it is um, present in quite a lot of the ship, I guess you could say. So it is going to be harvestable to high explosive damage, I guess you could say. Let's take that away, and obviously, as you may note, the secondary turrets uh, don't actually show up in the arm scheme, which is quite interesting. So, uh, let's start off with the bow. 60mm plate, and that's going to be capable of ricocheting 8 inch AP, I'm pretty sure. There, there you go. So, against other cruisers, you're going to be able to bow tank them which is going to be quite interesting and also looking at the stern you can do exactly the same here um, the deck armor on these is also 60 uh, millimeters thick so you are quite survivable against enemy cruisers I guess you could say let's go on to the upper armored belt and also some of the deck armor um, so your upper armored belt um, it's in two patches uh, we have a bit of 16 millimeters at the back which is going to be able to resist 18 JP and then we have some 70 millimeters at the front which is going to be able to resist um, apparently 16 inch shells um, 
I wouldn't want to try it in all honesty, but apparently you might be able to angle yourself against a 16 inch armor piercing shell. Uh, those of you who dare to, dare to dream uh, can feel free to have a crack at it. Uh, furthermore, you have some deck plating. Now you've got 13 millimeters at the rear and 25 millimeters at the front. The 25 millimeters at the front is going to be able to skip. Um, 14 inch AP shells off whereas the 13 millimeters at the back is going to be able to skip absolutely nothing so it's interesting she has this rather mixed armor scheme and uh, so she's got this um, I guess a 16 millimeters at the front and the stern then you got a random bit of 13 millimeters in the middle and then another patch of 25 millimeters so quite a, a bit of a muddle I guess you could say taking that away now we can look at the Citadel and the turrets and it's worth noting that the turrets are not above the Citadel the Citadel is entirely the engine spaces on this cruiser and it's mostly below the waterline now with the uh, sister the signs are 70 millimeters again capable of ricocheting 16 inch arm piercing shells if you dare to dream uh, furthermore the roof of the sister is ironically the plating is the other way round so where you saw the plating was 25 millimeters and 13 millimeters here the plating underneath the 13 millimeters is now a additional 25 millimeters and the plating that is under the 25 millimeters is now a meager 9 millimeters so if anything does pretty much punch through one of the thinner layers of armor um, it's gonna be or should it say punch through the 25 mil it's definitely going through the uh, 9mm here and if it makes it through the 13mm uh, it's gonna have got to try and get through the spaced armor of the 25mm so quite a strange armor scheme I guess you could say I guess the only downside I can really see to this is if you're broadside on and uh, which uh, is obviously going to be a certain death in this cruiser um, if it does punch through the upper arm belt and does make a trajectory towards your citadel um, it's going in that 9mm is not going to be stopping anything at all but apart from that the citadel is interesting I guess you could say or I guess it's worth mentioning up here that the front of the system is only covered in 13 millimeters of plating again that's not going to be stopping anything so if you uh, decide to try and angle against a battleship trying to rely on your armor scheme the AP is probably going to punch through your nose because that's not going to ricochet it and it's probably going to be lying straight for that 13 millimeters of plating that we just saw uh, which is obviously going to be the entrance into your system so uh, trying to angle against 16 inch gun that Battleships um, is probably only for the brave, is the best way to put it. So, back to the turrets and in relation to the Citadel. So, as you see, Citadel below the engine spaces. Turrets have no Citadel below them. What does this mean? It means your magazines are exposed uh, behind um, some meager 16mm plating. So, if anyone does start shooting directly underneath your turrets and you're kind of broadside on or anything like that, um, there's a chance that they might detonate you because they might find your magazine and set your magazines off. So, if you're coming up against this uh, cruiser, that's worth noting if you can catch her, uh, her bow out or her stern out when she's broadside on. Also for barrel ships with your uh, large caliber AP, make sure you aim nice up front and uh, see if you can get those uh, magazines. And if not, you're going to be getting citadels straight along the length of the ship. Furthermore, if they're stern tanking away, it's probably the most survivable position for this cruiser. But still, I'd probably aim up towards the front. The reason being is if you can find your way in, there might be a way to, say, sneak it through that thinner plating at the the back of the ship there and then continue and aim for that slightly thinner plating of the forward Cisdale and into the Cisdale there would be uh, probably my recommendation for killing the ship and she does look rather smart in the red white and blue anyway let's get back to the game Welcome back, so moving on to artillery. She's got six number six inch guns mounted in three dual gun turrets. We have A turret up front with B turret suit firing, and then we have Y turret at the rear. Now, these guns will offer you the shortest range of 14.3 kilometers, uh, which is a little bit to her detriment, I guess you could say. You can't really reach out too much with these guns. Uh, furthermore, uh, you do have the second fastest reload of 7 seconds, which uh, does obviously help uh, considering your low count of guns. However, you do have the joint third lowest HE shell damage of 2200. You also have an average fire chance of about 12% and the joint third lowest AP shell damage of 3300. I don't think I can touch that California anymore at the moment, but we should be able to there. Now when it comes to the DPMs, obviously that reload speed uh, is trying trying to make up for the uh, 
the lacking number of guns, but it's not exactly enough, unfortunately. She does have the joint third lowest high explosive DPM. She has the average fires per minute and the fourth lowest AP DPM. So there's not exactly a lot to shout about when it comes to the guns in the ship. Moving on to the torpedoes. Good news, they're deep water torpedoes, so you can't torpedo destroyers. Uh, you have two triple launchers, one mounted each side. Now, when you switch to torpedo launchers, you can see they've got reasonable angles, more slightly more advantageous to the rear, I guess you could say. Now, it's worth noting, down in the bottom left corner, it says one tube, and you can't switch to anything else. Now, let me show you what happens when you fire just the one tube. There you go, there's all three. So, um potential future bug fix I would say anyway continuing with the one tube of torpedoes which fires free uh, of course made in China I suspect um, these have an average launcher reload of 79 seconds along with the third highest torpedo damage of 15,000 so they do hit quite hard I guess you could say they do have the shortest detectability being deep water torpedoes of 0.9 kilometers and the torpedoes have an average speed of 60 knots so what this does mean is that the enemies will have the shortest um, time to react to the incoming torpedoes it's somewhere in the region of about 5.7 seconds i believe now apart from that range wise they have an average range of about eight kilometers so that gives you a nice idea of the kind of like reach that you do have with these torpedoes Maneuverability, she has an average speed of 33 knots. She has the best turning circle for a cruiser of 570 meters, and in fact is very comparable to a lot of destroyers at the tier. She also has the second best rudder shift of 6.7 seconds. When it comes to the concealment, uh, she's above average of 11.9 kilometers. However, the average is worth mentioning is only 11.8 kilometers, so it's not exactly that large, but it's Quite surprisingly large considering the size of this cruiser. I would have kind of expected her to be almost best in tier, but she's not. She's got an average detection by air of 7.1 kilometers and detectability when firing from smoke of 5.6 kilometers. Now we're just not going to shoot. We're going to focus on grabbing the cap really, I think in this case, because we are such a, such a light cruiser. But we should be all right to start maybe maneuvering with these chaps soon. Now when it comes to the consumables, she has a large collection of consumables, most of which you're probably not bothered taking. Why do I say that? Well first of all she comes with smoke, um, which is actually a crawling smoke screen. You may have seen me already use it once during this review. Basically, um, if you travel at quarter speed, you'll always remain within your smoke screen and this is a nice little trick that you can do with the Huang. So, the smoke screen takes 90 seconds to lay, which does mean you have 90 seconds of smoke screen to basically move around in for uh, quarter speed. Uh, furthermore, each puff of smoke only lasts 10 seconds. Um, so, um, the it's not really a uh, let's sit in the smoke screen or game kind of um, smoke screen. It's more of a let's keep moving. But you, if you want to sit in it, you could do so as well. Now the smoke screen takes 240 seconds to reload as well, so there is a bit of time between each one. Now with your other consumable, you have a choice of three. You can take the defensive AA fire consumable, which obviously increase your AA fire capability, um, which is only useful in games against carriers. You could take a torpedo reload booster, um, so you'll get two of these as well. So you get two of the defensive AA fire consumable. You can have two of the torpedo reload booster. Um, now this will basically reduce any torpedo reload down to eight seconds, which is actually quite nice. Um, and this has a 360 second reload. It's worth mentioning that because of so you do come with two of them um, but I'm not really sure why you'd want a torpedo reload booster it seems like a very odd choice alternatively last but not least the consumable that most people will probably just take is sonar the reason being is sonar is actually useful in every single game again you get two of these base it will be able to detect ships at four kilometers detect torpedoes at 2.8 kilometers has a 92 second duration and 180 second reload 
when it comes to the consumables, uh, I mean the modules, I, I beg my pardon, uh, when it comes to the modules that you can take with this ship, um, I've just taken the usual stuff, I kind of say. Um, I've taken propulsion module, uh, I think module 1 or 2, and I've also taken aiming systems. Um, basically, there's nothing really that special when it comes to the modules on this ship. As always, down in the description will be the command build, uh, if that is... Uh, I didn't mean to do that, <laughs> if that is of interest. And also, it's worth mentioning, she does come with a permanent camouflage. However, I didn't quite like it, so I stuck on the red, white, and blue. So let's see what we ended up with there at the end of the day. Obviously, we basically just chatted away, doing the review, rather than focusing on the damage, um, which, uh, to be honest, is probably to the detriment of the gameplay, but I kind of feel like the review is quite worthwhile, really. 72 hits on target, getting one kill, which was uh, kind of rather embarrassing, really. Uh, one fire, and uh, two defender rooms, and one assisted in capturing. Um, Performance-wise, still somehow getting fourth on the team, and the best crews on the team. Sometimes I do wonder. Anyway, economy wise, walking away with a total profit of 133,000 credits with a premium count, and that's all. In this case, she has a ship service cost of 28,000 credits. Well, all in all, as a cruiser, she is quite an interesting little cruiser, I have to say. She's lightly armoured uh, and she is small, um, but I have had quite a bit of fun with her. Her rudder shift's quite good as it is, and I have had a bit of fun with making her have quite a speedy speed build, uh, reaching about 37.8 knots. I believe and uh, the crawling smoke green really do like that it's a nice little trait um, it does mean you can kind of do these on the go kind of smoke ups um, other traits the torpedoes the torpedoes are the torpedoes it just it would have been nice to be able to switch between actually having like a narrow and a widespread rather than this like one kind of dodgy tube by tube but fires the whole bunch anyway kind of uh, kind of thing um, that has to really be sorted um, apart from that can't really complain the maneuverability is great artillery is is what it is survivability not amazing but then again she's quite a light cruiser and concealment I would have expected better but she's rather average but I kind of feel because she's shut such a small cruiser I feel like that should have been better consumables wise you everyone's just going to take sonar and smoke um, I don't really see why you'd want to take a, a defensive air fire consumable or torpedo reload booster in all honesty um, but it's obviously a rather fictional ship a what if 1950s refit which the Chinese could never afford um, but uh, as a shipping game she is a nice bit of fun if you did enjoy this review feel free to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of content feel free to subscribe uh, down in the description is the command build and the modules along with link to patreon if you want to support the channel on patreon and also the email address to the channel for sending in the viewing game captures if you are a patron your lovely names will be appearing on the end screen and until next time I'm the Gaff Major and back to the port hey hey clear the way here comes the galloping Out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, clear the way. Here comes the galloping lady.